What is up, YouTube? Today I was checking out Southern Law. You guys will have to pardon some of the noise. I have a Doberman puppy out here. He's terrible. Go on, dude. Take your dirty shoe and go. Yup, go on. There we go. We got rid of him. The dog has all the shoes. Anyway, I was checking this out, and this guy is covering, obviously, Liar Daryl Brooks. I've just, I've managed to catch um, a few of the videos on Daryl Brooks. He's insane. He's also kind of fascinating. The only reason I say that is because I've met Daryl Brooks's in real life. IRL, folks. I have, I have met these people that, like, live on the fringe the way that this guy was. Uh, and I thought this channel did a really good job of actually kind of going through, like, his criminal history and what led up to this. And the fact is that they just kept letting him out. This is just insane because, like, if I had done either one, like, any one of the charges or any of the allegations, if I had any of the pending allegations against me that this guy had just off of, like, one of his incidents... I don't understand how I could ever get home. Like, if I shot at a car full of people right now, there's just no way in my mind that I would ever go home with a $1,000 bond or a $500 bond or something crazy like that. And that's just one instance. Like, Mr. Brooks has had, like, like 10 instances like that where he's like shooting at people like damn near killing people and shit like that and then he's getting out for like a thousand dollar bond and then he just leaves the state goes somewhere else and then that all obviously leads up to him running six people over in his car and killing them and the crazy part is is right before that they just let him out for running somebody else over and it's like, are they letting these people out on purpose? That, that's what scares the shit out of me. Because like a normal law-abiding citizen like me, uh, there's no way in hell I would be out on no $1,000 bond, on no $500 bond, right? And And like normal people, they have jobs. So like a bond is important because it's going to let you get back to work. It's going to let you get back to making some money to pay the court to pay. So like people that pay bond that have jobs and have normal lives, there's incentive for them to go to court. That is why there is a bond program because, well, the state can't exactly expect you to pay lawyer fees and court fees and all of those fees if you pretty much instantly lose your job as soon as you go to jail. No, we have a system where you can at least bond out, you can get back to work, right, and you can sort through a difficult time in your life. I, I, I guess that's what the system is designed to do. But somebody like Daryl Brooks, who doesn't actually have a job and doesn't actually have like a place in society other than as a criminal, he's only out there doing crimes left and right. Uh, he's living off the lamb, I guess you could say. Uh, he pretty much, like if you just go through his history, all this dude does, he'd be outlawing. That's it. He'd just be outlawing. He's out there trying to rob people, uh, just trying to bully his way. He lies about everything, right? So I don't even understand why the uh, the bond system would even apply to somebody like him because clearly he's, he has no incentive to stay and go back to court and and, you know actually see the thing through every time he gets out on bond he just goes to a different state or something else and doesn't register there and just lies about everything so uh this guy should have been locked up like long 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 time ago before any of this crap happened he should have already been sitting in prison i don't know like 12 incidents ago and it's just bizarre as hell to me so here we go so one of the most startling things, and you may already know this, is that in the same month that he attacked the parade, earlier that month, he'd used the same SUV, his mother's SUV, to run over his girlfriend. He went to where she was, got into a fight with her, as he frequently did, punched her in the face. 
yeah, and then ran over her with the vehicle, leaving her on the ground at a gas station with tire marks on her leg, and dislocated femur and other injuries, including to her face from being. So, yo, just off of that alone, if, if I were to run some woman over, punch her, if I were to punch some woman in the face and run her over and they had tire tracks on her damn leg and she had a dislocated leg and they had like me punching her in the, like, I would never, I don't think I would ever get out of jail for that, period. Forget about anything else. Life is over for you as you know it. That's, that's what goes through my mind. As soon as I even hear these acts, these terrible deeds, running some woman over and punching her in the face and leaving her for dead in a parking lot, I just, I don't even think, like, a normal person wouldn't recover from that, right? Let's keep going. Punched. He did that. When the police went to get him for that, he was at his mother's house, tried to run away, and they got him. Later, he was charged with witness intimidation. A big surprise, he's going to try to run every time, right? Nation trying to coerce the girlfriend to retract her story, by despite the, way, the evidence of the injury. By the way, you, you guys know what happens to someone like Daryl Brooks when they're on the run? Like, uh, you go from being a criminal, and I've seen this, I've known people like this, I've, I've had to be wary of them growing up. Uh, they start running from the law, and they no longer really look forward to things other than uh, self-gratification right now, right? Because I'm going to go out with a bang. I'm already going down, right? I got 12 warrants over, I don't know, like running some woman over and punching her in the face and this and that. Like they got me dead to rights. I'm going to go to prison as soon as I, like, I go back into court. Uh, I'm out. I'm only living for today. That makes somebody extremely dangerous, and usually they're not just going to hop in a car and go run people over. That is just some psychotic shit to do. But normally people will go on a like a stealing rampage. They will rob everybody. They will break into shit, steal stuff. Uh, they'll be at the pawn shop. They, and they're just probably trying to get money to either keep on running or just to get high. I don't know. Like That's typically what happens. And I wouldn't be surprised if Mr. Daryl Brooks was on a bunch of drugs or selling drugs or peddling them. I mean, it just kind of fits the whole lifestyle, unfortunately. Um, who knows what he was coming down on when he decided to run six people over, right? Anyway, just wanted to give my two cents on that because, like, I, I've known people like this. They're scary. Uh, and you never know when you're going to run across one of them right? You're going to intersect in life. You're just going to like, you could, you could walk around the corner and you could walk by one of these people the wrong way and they will try to kill you, right? Homeboy will hop into a car and try to run you over. Like, uh, uh, this is what he did to just innocent people, right? Imagine what would happen if you accidentally walked by a Daryl Brooks and he made eye contact with you. You don't even have to make eye contact with him. He could make eye contact with you. You look at him and all of a sudden he's got a problem with you because like this shit happens, man. Like it really does with these people. I've also worked with people that have mental uh, disabilities and I've seen aggressive people where like literally... If you make eye contact with them, they will go from, oh, hi, how are you, to you stupid bitch, and attack you, like, zero to 100 instantly because you made eye contact the wrong way, um, and with a lot of these people, it's hard to communicate anyway, so uh, these people exist, and the thing is, I don't understand when we have one of these people and they already have an established criminal record and history how we're letting them out on bond for $500. I guess it comes back to that. Anyway, let's keep going. That was in the same month that he attacked the parade. So, so wait, what happened there? How, how did he get arrested and he get back out, get behind the wheel of his mother's vehicle that he had previously used to run over somebody and then run over more people? How'd that That's happen? story of his life. Well, he was let out on a $1,000 bail. By the way, I'm going to be the first one to say it. Mama's guilty as fuck, too. You want to talk about being a mafia wife? You were a mafia mama. That's what you did. Okay? You kept getting his dumbass out of out of jail, 
and looking sideways when he would go scamper off to go do some more crimes. And, like, you thought you were being a good mother by get Look, look, man. I got two boys. If, if one of them even started looking like he was going down Mr. Daryl Brooks' path, I would try to get him help immediately. Uh, I sure as hell would not be bailing him out of jail, especially if he's a goddamn adult. No, you need to stay in there and figure out what you did, uh, especially if you're running people over with cars. Um, so all I'm saying is, like, at this point, I think his mama needs to be held to some kind of standard over this because I understand that's your family and all. Uh, and, I mean, it's your responsibility, right? You brought this thing into the world, mama. Mrs. Brooks Jr., like, or, not Miss Brooks Jr. Mrs. Brooks brought Daryl Brooks into this world. I'm talking about his mama. I don't know what her name is. I just know Daryl Brooks has a mama because she's the one that keeps bailing his ass out of jail and just letting him get back out on the street and doing the same damn thing. Oh, who did he run over now? That's what I'm saying. Uh, she should be held accountable somehow. Like, for fuck's sake, if... If you're, I think if you are bailing somebody out of jail more than once and they keep going back into jail, you shouldn't be able to bail them out. How about that? How about that? Oh, your mom bailed you out last time. She can't bail you out again. I don't know. We, we need something like that because then moms like that are just going to enable um, people like him and then a bunch of innocent people end up dead. Seems low, doesn't it? Seems very low. It is, but it's actually double what he had previously been let out on. Yeah, his he had been charged the year before with shooting at a vehicle with people in it, family members of his. He didn't hit any of them, but he had shot at them, and he was facing charges for that, but his trial was delayed, I don't know, probably due to COVID, which slowed down a lot of criminal trials, and his bail was reduced to $500 for shooting at people despite his lengthy prior criminal history. So naturally, what do you do when someone's out and about for shooting at people and they use a vehicle to run over a woman and beat her? Also, well, you double that bail to $1,000. That'll make a, a big dent, won't it? No, because the SUV yeah, owning... And no, that's the problem is they weren't making a big enough dent for Mama to not be able to bail him out. Other comes and posts this bail for him to get him out on these charges. He's then taken to another facility where he faces the issue of potentially. By the way, real quick, the reason I think some of this stuff, like not applying to normal people, I mean, first and foremost, the whole mama thing. Let me tell you guys what my mama did when I was like, I don't know, 18 and I got pulled over. I didn't even get pulled over. I wasn't driving. I was in a, in a car full of people and we were going up north to some kegger, like we were, like you, you know what I mean. We were dumb kids. We were gonna go, we we're gonna go to some bonfire, and we were gonna drink. There were gonna be some girls there. Uh, and this cop pulled us over. He took everyone in the car to jail because uh, he found a roach in the car. This shit was not even mine. Didn't even matter. Didn't even matter. They it, like this was like a, I think it was like North Branch or something like that. It was kind of far up north and that is how they get their money this is even what the courts and uh my lawyer that i had to get and everything explained to me like this is how they get their money if you're driving through any of the branches north branch west branch they will pull you over and they'll get you any ticket that they can because that is just how their their justice system makes money is from people driving through from out of town uh my buddy his dad that came up to try to like you know bail us out and help us out because he had normal parents like that uh he got pulled over and ticketed on the way to the jail to try to you know get get us bailed out um my mama didn't do any of that shit no no my mama was not like oh we need to get you out we need to save you man i called my mom and i got a hold of her and i was like i don't even remember how it went down but it was like some stone cold uh, good luck, comrade, type shit. You fucked up. <laughs> You're terrible. 
You, you need to learn from this. You should have to pay. This is what my mama told me. You think she was going to go get $500 to bail me out for a mistake? Uh-uh. As far as my mama's concerned, that's just part of the punishment you made for yourself. In fact, let me see if they will keep you longer. That's the way my mama thinks. That way, when your dumbass gets out, you ain't ever going to do that shit again, right? Because I'll call them and I'll ask them to keep you longer. That's the way my mama thinks. If Daryl Brooks had a mama like that, uh, I don't think there would be a bunch of dead people right now. So, bad mother, bad child, I guess. Going to jail over some child support things for contempt of court. And he tells the judge there, hey, I've been in jail for the last six months down in Georgia, so I couldn't make these payments. And that was a lie. And he was let out then five days before the attack at the parade. And, the, of course, that occurred that day when he was also, again, beating up girlfriend, right? And then she gets aid from Kirby. He says, you need to get out of here. The police are going to come. Gets in his vehicle knowing that he's got all these charges against him already, right? Previously running over the girlfriend, previously beating the girlfriend, um, bail jumping, uh, the shooting and all that. He doesn't want to get caught again. I mean, you know, it's so inconvenient that the police keep coming every time you're trying to beat a woman. I mean, it's, it's hard. So he gets in the SUV and he drives away and he goes to the parade. What and also, like... Come on, this woman is probably also calling the police on you and reporting on you, and then the next second she's hopping in the car with you. I That's just bizarre to me. You would have thought after he ran her over the first time, she just, like, I don't know, would change her number and leave? That's when you run away, bitch. Okay, when some fool is running you over with a truck and breaking your leg, you would think you would have a tire track on your goddamn leg to look at when that fool tries to blow up your phone. And you would think that when that phone's ringing, you'd look down at your mangled effing leg with a tire track in it, and for even one second, you would just remember how this guy just ran you over with a goddamn SUV, I don't know what, yesterday, a week ago, whatever, you probably barely walk. Yet she answers the phone, it keeps getting into his goddamn truck. I'm sorry, her mama should have got involved and been like, child, you here, we're going to go get you a new phone, a new number, and uh, we're sending you to go live with your Aunt Joyce for the next X amount of years. I don't know, like, anything, but I, I just, I don't understand how this keeps happening. Like, and it just goes on and on. His criminal history is absolutely insane. Whatever was in his mind at that moment, I don't really care. Uh, the result ended up being the same, which was he intentionally drove that vehicle through the parade and ran over people intentionally, right. intentionally, absolutely That's intentionally. A non-malfunctioning right. vehicle that also had now not malfunctioned the previous time he ran over somebody with it, fled the scene, and then told a completely ludicrous story shortly thereafter to the police, completely calm and collected, not concerned at all that he had just killed and injured scores of people. So how about which, which by the way, is like the true sign of a sociopath. Yo, look, let me tell you something. This is just be me being real, okay? All right? And I'm trying I'm trying to word this in a way where it could possibly have Okay, how about this? If I me if I accidentally ran over six people, forget about six people. If I ran over a handful of people, some people, a person and they died, there's no way in hell I'd be able to keep cool, keep my composure, go run away, make up some story for, like, no, 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 I, I, I would stop the damn truck, I would get out right there, I would be trying to CPR, I would be trying to do any goddamn thing I could to, I don't know, not be a murderer, I mean, whether you get charged for murder, murder or not, you have still killed a person, and that's going to weigh differently on different people that is what i'm saying and by the way i'm not like crazy religious or anything like that i just cannot really stand the idea of killing i'm all about live and let live um, at the same time though your right to throw a punch ends at the tip of my nose uh that's just the way that i see the world the way that it should be uh everyone should be able to be free and think for themselves uh, as long as you're not hurting me or anyone around me, like, I don't know, running six people over with a, with a truck. And this is why I'm, I'm saying we like, everybody has to be careful because 
you can run across people like Daryl Brooks um, in your everyday life. And unfortunately, this is why personally I carry. I do. I did. Like, what, what else are you going to do against a Daryl Brooks? And like I was saying, what, what if you actually make eye contact with him and he actually targets you, right? These six people that he ran over were probably just random, faceless people that he just said, F it, ran him over because he was mad. Yo, what if he actually targeted you? What if he actually got mad at you and someone, some idiot like him can get mad at you over the dumbest shit? over something you didn't even know that you did because guess what daryl brooks is fucking insane i mean you can just see that from the damn core so i could just see him having problems with all sorts of people for no reason which by the way also he's going to get his ass beat in prison because that's that is what the prison system is designed for it is actually designed to deal with people like daryl brooks what do you think is going to happen when he starts getting all loud? I mean, for any of you that have actually watched the Daryl Brooks trial and the way that he talks to the judge and the way that he just talks to everyone and slams his fist on the table and starts yelling at the courtroom, like the judge got mad props just for putting up with his shit. Um, fact of the matter is, he ain't going to be doing that shit in prison. He's not. He, he literally is not. I dare you to go into even like the common area or... Uh, something like that and start slamming your fist down and start talking like that to anybody. No, other prisoners will not let you do that. And he will get his little crazy ass beat so bad. He just will probably not even be running his mouth the next day. I guarantee you Daryl Borg going to be sitting in prison with his mouth shut. There's just no way that you get uh, loud and uppity like that. Um, in general population or wherever the hell they're keeping him. There's going to be somebody that has some mad issues with him just running six people over because they're going to look at it like, yo, I mean, there's people that are in prison that are like, I've hurt bad people. And that is the way that, that is a way that they can kind of justify what they've done. I've only hurt bad people. There's plenty of people that look at it like that. And they look at someone like Daryl Brooks and say, man, he killed good people. Those people he ran over, those could have that could have been my family. My family goes to the parade every year. I would never target anybody like that. I only hurt bad people. I don't like Mr. Daryl Brooks. And they're gonna go after him. And there's a there's there's a lot, there's a lot of prisoners like that that live by a code like that. That's all I'm gonna say. And that is, yo, that is why. Child molesters get absolutely fucking destroyed in prison. I don't think anybody's going to argue that with me. They have a bunch of terms for it. Chomos. Uh, Voldemort's a chomo, bro. Yeah, man. And those are like probably, those are some of the last words you will hear from some essays calling you a chomo. You're dead, dude. It's like that. Um, so I don't think Daryl Brooks is is going to be, uh, and, and that's the thing too. All of this is brought to light that he technically, yeah, he is a child molester. Uh, when when it's all said and done, he screamed at uh, the court over that. Um, what, what was he saying? Ask me how old she told me she was. Ask me and started like screaming at the court like it was the court's problem that he got a 14-year-old girl pregnant or something like that. And didn't ask for her ID and didn't actually confirm her age. I mean, that, that like anybody in the real world is like, okay, that's my problem to do, right? Uh, if some girl walked in here right now and just dropped all her clothes in front of me and was like, yeah, let's go. I, you, you better believe I would be asking for some ID, especially if she looked young. Sorry, that's just the world we live in. It's going to come down to that being my responsibility uh, so I, I get that someone like Mr. Daryl Brooks just thinks, oh, well, I can say that she told me she was 18 when she was 14. That gets me off the hook completely. And if someone brings it up, I'll just start yelling and screaming it at him. And, uh, well, I win the argument then. And, uh, I, you know, in his mind, he's not really a child molester because, and let's be real here. She probably told him she was 14. He probably knew her age. He just does not give a shit. Um, that's kind of what I got from Daryl Brooks. So, yeah, uh, this is where it gets good. 
uh, like five minutes into it, he actually starts going over his criminal history before he ran all these people over with with the car, with the the SUV. Like right now, like this five minutes in, he's pretty much just talking about what happened that night. And he ran all these people over because he was fighting with his girlfriend, who he just ran over not too long ago. Obviously not long ago enough. Uh, so, yeah. And then now he's going to actually go through his other criminal history. And then you're just going to be like, how? How is it possible? How would this guy be out of jail ever at all, period, for anything? I, I'm sorry. And then... Like, uh, over me having to go to jail for a couple of days up north when I was a kid, uh, I mean, I was on probation for like a year after that. It might have been two years. I can't even remember. It was like an absolutely absurdly long process of going, checking in with the court, taking drug tests for them. Um, sending them money, sending them more money. And like a year or two years later, you're like, I'm never going through that shit again. Okay. I kind of see how the justice system is just supposed to work on people like me. Uh, that just apparently never happens t to Mr. Daryl. Bro. I'm just trying to relate any way that, that I can here. Like, I just, I don't see it. I don't see it. Like I, I had to go to jail and it haunted me to the ends of the earth over getting pulled over in a car that had a freaking roach in it when I was like just turning 18. Like, and like I said, it wasn't even my damn roach. They just wanted to ticket as many people as they could. So everyone in the car went to jail. Um, yeah. Yeah. And comparing that to hearing about what this guy's doing and shooting at people, running them over. And then he is out of jail the next day on like $500, $1,000. I'm pretty sure this is the crazy part to me. I am fairly confident that my bail, my bond, whatever it was, for getting pulled over uh, in a car full of people with a roach in it, I'm pretty sure my bail was higher than that. Mine was more than like $500. You're telling me I could have... <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me I could have Daryl Brooks that shit and just acted crazy and wiped poop on my face and they would have been like, you know what, let's just make his bail $50 because that's kind of what it's starting to look like. That's kind of what it's starting to look like. I'm pretty sure me and like my roommate who both had to get like bailed out uh, by his dad, I'm pretty sure he had to drop like a grand on each of us to get us out and then we both had to go back to, you know, court and... Uh, just do like the, the probation. Um, yeah, I know I, I was a bad kid. I'm, I'm not sorry. It's just, just, just growing up. It's growing up. It's part of life. Right. Uh, but the shit that we're talking about here is not just growing up and part being part of like people will go to jail for a DUI. Like people go to a bar, they get too drunk and the cops take you to a drunk tank and you have to sleep it off. Yeah. You go to jail for a day. Okay, the, like this happens. This happens to normal people. Okay, but the shit that Daryl Brooks is doing, this does not happen to normal people. Running people over with a car, shooting at people. Why does this fool even have a gun? How the hell can this fool even get a gun? Do you know the hoops that I had to jump through to get a goddamn gun? There's no way in hell Daryl Brooks could have passed any of that shit. None. Not none of it. None of it. I I don't think so. No. So I just this this whole thing is just fascinating to me. And uh, again, I had to get him on the shitty people's playlist. Uh, so this is just going to be my recording for that. But let's quickly let this man from Southern Law go through his, his actual criminal record that led up to him running over six people. That true, Daryl. You didn't want the, the people to know that, did you? Right? I, I didn't think so. But you look at his age and his entire adult life has been spent committing crimes living off the dole, living off his mother, exactly. and committing crimes. That's what I'm his saying. signal achievement that he pointed to to the jury was apparently the ability to impregnate women and so have them generate the children. How work for someone like that? Not child support, not working to support them or anything right, like that, just the fact that, that they were created uh, as he traveled around the country committing crimes. And Matter of fact, warrants are sound 
like a good excuse for him to uh, get away from child support and get away from kids that he probably, I mean, let's be real here. Does anybody out there think Daryl Brooks could be a good father? The answer is no. The answer, the answer is no in case you, yeah, no. There's just no way. So uh, should have never been bailed out, bonded out, whatever. That shouldn't even exist for someone like him who is just a career criminal and it's been established. This is already like your 12th bond out. No, they should just say no. In at least one case impregnating uh, a girl who was well underage. So in 1999, he was charged with substantial battery, and it kicks off his adult criminal record. Okay. What did he do when he was a kid? I don't know. Was he an angel right up until the time he became an adult? I doubt it. 1999, baby. So he's talking about whoa, well, and he's talking about when Daryl Brooks is 18. So that he's going back to that. He's he's going back to when Daryl Brooks, when his criminal record first started, and it big surprise is like right when you turn 18. Now, hey. Yeah, I could technically say I'm right there in the same boat as Mr. Daryl Brooke because, like I just said, when I was 18, I got pulled over and, you know, we all went to jail for a roach. Uh, the only difference is I never went back. <laughs> like, I was like, I'm straight on all that. No, thank you. I never went back. Um, Mr. Brooks, on the other hand, I don't know, like, went back 24 times and for shooting people and running them over. Yeah. And I also think it's worth noting that his criminal record is just what he got caught doing. He's probably not the worst criminal in the world. Okay, that, Might be the worst lawyer all, in the world. That's also true, too. That, uh, and, I, and I will say that, right? For the roach that I went to jail for, you better believe that there was plenty of joints and roaches that I didn't go to joint for. At, to joint. Damn, you would think I have a roach in my hand right now. Uh, there were plenty of roaches and joints that I didn't go to jail for um, because I never got caught for them. So, you know, when you're sitting there in, in your jail cell, you know, spending the night in jail as like some dumb idiot kid, you are thinking about that a little bit. You're like, well, it, it's not like this is the first time I've ever seen a roach in my life or a joint and magically the police showed up and like yeah, a normal person starts thinking like to a certain extent, I've done this to myself. I was with a group of people that were passing joints around in a car. I did put myself in that situation. Someone like Daryl Brooks never has that thought. Uh, and no remorse. He doesn't feel bad. He can't process emotions like that, I don't think, because I think he actually is a sociopath. Um, yeah, and we put a lot of sociopaths on the shitty people's playlist because... Um, like sociopaths that actually act on terrible impulses and don't go and get help. As far as I'm concerned, they are just as bad as child molesters that act on bad impulses and don't get help. It leads to people getting maimed, crippled, destroyed, innocent people. It leads to people's lives getting ruined just for some sick bastard like this to satisfy some urge for, I don't know, like what, a whole 10 seconds yeah, it's it's absolutely some of the worst shit that can happen in society. And I think we should uh, be looking out for this stuff. And as I say that, I also have to admit that all the red flags were here. Why was nobody calling this out and being like, whoa, no, 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 don't let him out. His own mama should have done it, damn it. That's your responsibility. You brought him into this world. Make sure he gets locked up where he can't destroy a bunch of innocent people's lives that's the very least you could do as a goddamn parent his mom should be ashamed of herself i'm sure she already is but he's probably not the worst criminal in the world so i think it's fair to say he probably did a lot of things he didn't get caught for right so well, we just anyway about. 1999 he's charged with substantial battery oh he gets off pretty easy with that okay first one he's charged in 2002 with some other low-level crimes so like i was saying i never went back uh, Mr. Daryl Brooks, like 1999, and then 2002. So, within three years, like it probably took him a year to get off of the probation from the battery or whatever, if they even gave it to him, who knows with this guy. And then literally within two years, what what happens again? He's going back to prison for, for to jail for what? 2005, he's charged with obstruction. Okay. Another he three uh, fa fails to appear for that. 
which sets the pattern for later of if he can get out of court, he gets out. Yep. And like I said, I've known people like this. I know I knew a guy that, um, what was it? He somehow managed to spend every Christmas in jail. Like when it, like it just always happened. He could only stay out of jail for like a year at a time. Daryl Brooks, kind of same thing. It sounds like he's able to stay out of jail for two years, three years at a time, tops, and then he catches more charges. And they're not little charges, they're big things. He goes away, I mean, go to different states sometimes. 2006, yep. he's convicted of statutory sexual seduction after impregnating a 15-year-old girl in Sparks, yep. Nevada, required to register as a sex offender. And he writes a letter to the judge. So there you go, right after 2006, you will get maimed and destroyed in prison. And you did that to yourself by just not asking some girl how old she was, not actually finding out, not confirming. I mean, come on. I guarantee you, Brooks knew exactly how old she was. He did not care. I was saying, please feel sorry for me. I had a bad father who was also not around. And I got mental issues and things like that. I'm, I'm no monster, Judge. I mean, just, just let me out of here, okay? And that case, though, if you look at the details, are worse than what it sounds like on the surface, his behavior right. there, especially with regard to the girl. And they're letting him out, right. So he also apparently was in jail in Reno, Nevada at one point, gave an interview about how bad it is to be on meth. Oh. Meh. Okay. okay, I'll give him. Okay. All right. All right. I, I figured... Remember, I was saying at the very beginning of this, like, I don't know this guy's whole history, but, like, there has to be some kind of drugs mixed in in there somewhere, right? And th that's what, especially something like meth, that's what people do when they're on the lam and they're on meth and they have warrants. I have 25, I'm going to go to prison for whatever, whatever, and I know this, there's no way out of it as soon as they catch me. Okay, what can I do to get a, as much meth as I can? Maybe I can go out like that. And that's the problem is people get crazy methed up on a crazy stimulant like that. And then eventually the cops end up getting called on them. And when the cops get there, these people already know they have a shit ton of warrants. They're high on meth. They know that this is probably their last time going in. They're never going to see freedom or daylight ever again. And then those people do stupid shit. Maybe run a bunch of people over. Maybe I mean I, I have literally heard of people grabbing a BB gun and running out to the cops and pulling a BB gun on them. So it's suicide by cop. It's suicide by cop, and people people will do that. That is, that is a term that officers are actually familiar with. Suicide by cop, when somebody doesn't, they don't want to off themselves until the cops show up and then instead of going to prison or going to jail because they know they're going to be going in for so long because all their warrants and whatever they would rather have the cops shoot them and have their life be over and unfortunately being on something like meth is not going to help anything like that i don't imagine you could talk much sense into anybody on meth uh, so, uh, crazy. That sticks out to me a little bit. Uh, it makes sense. Meth makes sense here. As crazy as that sounds. That one. 2009, he's back in Wisconsin. He pleads no contest and found guilty in his 2005. And notice I says like back in Wisconsin, because he's going back and forth to different states at this point just to keep the run going because, well, I have warrants here. Let me go try my luck over in this state. And unfortunately, people like this travel. They cover a large area. And that means they can affect that many more people. Right? This isn't just like a Reno problem now. This isn't some crazy asshole that lives in Reno that is living crazy over there. Whatever. I'm, I'm in Michigan. I don't care what happens in Reno. That doesn't work. Because guess what? This asshole, he will get... Uh, felonies and he will get warrants in Reno and he'll have to leave Reno and then who knows he might drive up to Michigan and I might run into him down the street uh, while he's pissed off looking for meth like th that shit happens because these people travel they travel to get the hell away from the law so uh, they're forced onto different populations of people 
when in reality he probably never should have left Reno. They should have snagged his ass up right there, been like, get comfortable, you ain't going nowhere. Instruction case. Sentence to two days, time served. Oh, crap. 2010, he's getting a little more active. He's getting a little older, a little more mature, and his crime game is stepping up. Uh-huh. He's charged with strangulation, battery, and criminal damage to property. After Who thinks they could ever get out of jail for that? Strangulation. Uh, forget about like the damage of property. That's just little shit that they tacked on there. I just heard strangulation and what? Uh, oh, also, side note, this just reminds me. I've heard that he has a history of torturing and hurting animals. That is also the sign of a sociopath. They they have uh, no remorse when you hurt like an innocent animal or kick a baby in the face. You instantly have remorse. Like even like if it happens on accident, say you kicked a baby in the face on accident, you would instantly feel bad. Because that baby couldn't even, like, put its arms up to defend itself. It's innocent. It's, like, you messed up, right? Well, his mind doesn't think like that. There is no feeling bad. There is no feeling remorse. And that's why it's pretty, like, when you don't feel bad and you don't feel remorse, it's pretty easy to run six people over. It's You could kill a whole room full of people if you don't feel bad for even one of them. Now, I don't... I, that's just like the only way I can explain it because nothing about that relates to me. I am like completely the opposite, if anything. Uh, yeah, I, I don't condone hunting. I don't really believe in just going out there and shooting animals and stuff like that. We have enough food at the store. Enough animals have to die for us to get food at the store and it's there and it's readily available. I'm going to leave the deer in my yard alone. That's just personally me, right? Uh, but then you got someone like Daryl Brooks who will probably, you know, and serial killers in general, they got to start somewhere, right? They can't, they, like, they don't just go after people. They start with animals, unfortunately. They start torturing animals. They start killing animals, and they get some sort of sense of excitement from it. Uh, doing something like that would give me an absolute sense of terror, the only way I could even hunt and kill an animal is if me and my children were starving to death and we literally had to survive. I would go kill an animal and I'd probably cry like a little bitch. I'd, I'd make up some fucking Indian prayer and I'd make sure that we used all the bones and all the tendons and all the everything, even if we didn't know how to do a goddamn thing with any of it. I would feel terrible having just to kill an animal just to survive and eat. I'm just being honest with you. I'm just being real. I'm not a hunter. That's not the guy I am. Um, trust me, I'm a badass in other ways, okay? I, I more than make up for it. I, I promise you, I swear. Uh, but someone like Daryl Brooks, it's completely different. Like he, There is completely different. There's no remorse. And like I said, I've worked with people like this. I've been attacked by people like this. It's scary. It's really just scary because you're like, where the hell are they getting this from? Where is all this anger and uh, strength coming from? What the hell even happened? What? And, like, I can only imagine what some of these victims felt like. Like, you are at the end of all this rage that's being thrown at you. You're literally being ran over to death by a car, and you can tell that it's on purpose. And the last thing you think is, why? Why the hell is this happening to me? And you'll you'll never know. You won't want to know either. Because the answer is because some dumbass psychopath got into a car and decided to run people over. Um, after he had already ran people over and we could have locked his dumbass up and threw away the key forever. Him and his goddamn mama could have locked both of them up as far as I'm concerned. And we didn't. Woman told police he shoved her to the ground and grabbed her throat. He pleads no contest to that. He didn't know all the sovereign stuff then. I mean, if there's fringe on the flag, they have to let you go, right? Oh, yeah. Whatever. He's a sovereign citizen. Uh, other counts dismissed guy. after he pleads guilty to strangulation as part of his plea agreement. Sentenced to 90 days in jail with work release and three years probation, which all of that's meaningless to him because yep. he doesn't respond to consequences. Exactly what I was saying. And he doesn't take responsibility. Exactly. 2011, he's like charged this. with resisting a police officer in Milwaukee County when he tries to flee during a traffic Yeah, he's going to resist and flee at any given point in time now because at this point in his criminal history, anytime he gets taken into jail, he 
he knows there's a chance that they might make him stay for all of his history, for all of the prior charges. So at this point now, he starts actually becoming a dangerous criminal for police officers to deal with because, yo, if you even roll up on him and don't know who he is and you're walking down, he's walking down the street and you're a police officer and you just ask him, hey, have you, like, he might freak out and shoot you. He might freak out and shoot at a, like, he becomes dangerous to police officers because as far as he's concerned now, every police officer has an agenda to take him off the streets, which they should whether they actually recognize him or not. So anytime the police show up, he's going to run, he's going to fight uh, because uh, he might not ever get out again. And like I said, I've known people, I, I watched a dude jump through a screen when it, it, the window was open, thank goodness for him, because like this cop kicked a goddamn door in and pulled his gun out. And there was like three people in the room. Uh, the one dude just lay down on the bed and like put his hands out and the cop actually held the gun to my head and started screaming for everyone to get down. So I got down on the ground, like no problem, but he did point a gun at my freaking head. I get it though. It's one police officer and there's three people in the room. Like he could have used me as a goddamn shield if my buddies would have pulled guns out to shoot at him or something. I get it. I'm not mad. I, okay, you know what? Yeah, I'm not mad. I understand. I put myself in that situation and a police officer put a gun to my head. I get that. I'm not trying to play victim. and I'm not trying to say that this cop was a terrible person for doing that. He was probably just making sure he was going to be okay. The point being is I went down on the ground, no problem. I wasn't doing anything illegal. My other buddy went down. He wasn't doing anything illegal. TJ, oh, I shouldn't even have said his name. Dude who had warrants was just like no shirt, no shoes, no service, jumped and mind you, we're in an apartment on like the second floor. So it's like, it's like 25 feet down. Uh, he jumped through this window. Thank goodness the window was open and that he just jumped through the screen part of it. And he actually ran from the cops for like a week. They had a manhunt for him and everything. He had to hide under cars. Uh, and then he got snuck out of there. He got a ride out of there. It was like a whole manhunt. It was yeah over just... Whatever, I'm not, I'm not going to get into dude's issues, but the point is, he was one of these people that was, this is the guy that I was talking about that's in jail uh, just every winter. Like, he just ends up getting locked up for that. So, that was one of his ballads. Um, but then again, like I said, I put myself in that position. I just shouldn't even have been there. And as a result, I got a gun held to my head. So, uh, I don't put myself in situations like that. I learned along the way. Obviously, Mr. Daryl Brooks didn't, right? Uh, but much like TJ, that's what's going to happen now. Once you have so much of a criminal history, as soon as you even encounter the cops, shit, this could be the last day for me. Uh-oh, time for me to spaz the hell out and do a bunch of stupid shit. And, uh, like, this dude damn near broke his leg jumping out of that window. Um, that almost happened. Like, he actually, I think he had, like, a fractured leg or something. Um, and then he could have just ended up just going to jail anyway. And for, which by the way, he did end up going to jail anyway. It does eventually catch up with you. And this guy had plans, big surprise of leaving the state. He got a hold of some vague family member that he hadn't talked to in forever and was just going to go down there and start fresh in Virginia or some shit. It's always the same damn plan. And guess what? The cops actually grabbed him before he could get on a Greyhound bus. Which is funny because in order to, I believe, get the money for the Greyhound bus, he had to go to the mall and get a normal job at some little store. And the funny thing was, it was like, why don't you just do that from the start? Then you, you like, you know, you, you wouldn't have all these problems to deal with with the cops. And I think he was actually finding some fulfillment at working at this mall job. Uh, and then, of course, they came and got him and took him to jail. And he lost the mall job. Uh, I guess he should have got that Greyhound ticket a few days earlier. Uh, that's 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 what happens to these guys, right? Uh, now, that guy isn't a terrible person. I don't see him, like, killing people and being uh, uh, a sociopath. Uh, he's just a misguided dude. And, um, you know, he might be a criminal. He might steal from you. I don't think he's going to kill from you. Daryl Brooks, on the other hand, is a straight-up sociopath. He... He would kill you to steal your stuff. Why? 
Because even if he didn't need to kill you, I could see him doing it. Why? Because he doesn't feel remorse. He doesn't feel bad. So we're talking about two different kinds of people, of course, but still both people with a criminal history and how those people are both going to act when the police come knocking. Right? It's like not a big surprise that after he ran all these people over, Daryl Brooks fled and ran away and tried to throw his hands up and, and say, what? What are you talking about? I was just sitting here minding my own business. Uh, yeah, I saw somebody crash over there, but like, I don't even own a car, even though they found car keys in his pocket. Ugh, terrible. Stop. He turned the car on and put it in drive. The officer says he feared Brooks was going to run him over. Yep. Foreshadowing of just how bad this idiot was going to be. Oh, let's see. 2011, his probation is revoked for the strangulation case. He is allegedly sent to jail for a while. Then he pleads guilty for resisting arrest. Uh, sex offender sweep in 2012 finds that he's provided a false address on his registration. What? Brooks lie? Come yeah, on. Brooks That's lie, hard what? to believe. They arrest him for failing to obey sex offender laws. He's never been in compliance with it, apparently, at least not since... By the way, I guarantee you that the whole time they arrested him for sex offender laws, he screamed at them vigorously... Ask me how old she said she was, though. Ask me how old she said she was, though. Like, it's their problem. <laughs> like, it's their problem that he impregnated a 14-year-old girl or whatever. I'm sure if Brooks was here now, he'd scream at me and say, She was 15. She was 15. You, you want to put it all out on the record? Well, let's, let the, let's get the record straight. Okay, let's get the record straight. I'm off on a minute detail. You are still a goddamn sex offender and you still impregnated a child. Well, ask me how old she told me she was. This is exactly what he was screaming in the courtroom. Like that somehow absolves him of all the guilt of knocking up literally a child. Right? Uh, so... According to Brooks already, like, this child seduced him. She told him she was 18, and, I mean, he didn't have the mental capacity to realize that he's looking at a 14-year-old child and not an adult, and didn't have the common sense to be like, sure, do you have an ID? Let me just see that ID real quick. Any way to confirm your age? It'll only take two seconds, and I won't be a goddamn sex offender. But, you know, he didn't. You didn't have the common sense to do that, so I can't feel bad for him. 2008, he posts bail and fails to appear in court. Again, repeat behavior. That's a already gets issued. If Come, anyone's counting, we're already up to like the fifth time I think he's posted bail and just didn't show up over between like the sex offender thing, the different batteries, the crimes. The jeez. Back to Wisconsin, doesn't. Um, Register there as a sex offender, which he's supposed to do. Of course. 2020, he shoots at a relative and a relative's friend. I believe they were in a vehicle at the time he was firing at them. He didn't hit anybody, fortunately, or I guess maybe he would have been. Um, well, I don't know if he would have been held in jail after that or not. Who knows? This guy. How does that happen? I can't shoot at a car full of people and not get locked up for life, whether I killed somebody or not. And I don't have warrants. I don't have like a criminal history. Okay. This guy with a criminal history longer than my goddamn leg, right? Uh, shoots at a car full of people. How is it that we're able to hear anything about him after that ever at all? How is it that he even gets a chance to run people over with a damn car? Was uh, given all the breaks that it's possible to get. He's charged with two yeah. counts of second degree of recklessly endangering safety and one count of felon in possession of a firearm. Is that yes. real trouble for Brooks? Not that would be me going to prison for life, I would think. I would think that after I got a lawyer and actually settled all that in court, just the charges that they read off about you know, fire, like a weapon and this and that, with some aggravated assault, shooting at people, I would think, hmm, I after I pay the lawyer and lose my job and everything, I'm probably going to go to prison for probably 20 years. Maybe I'll get some good time. Maybe I'll get out in 10, 15 years. That's what happens when you shoot at people with a gun. Just that's what I would think off the top of my head, but not Daryl. He got right back out. That's insane.
early, his bail is set um, initially at a slightly higher amount, but eventually it gets moved to $500 as the case is delayed. So doesn't that sound like they're trying to get rid of him? We'll keep lowering his bond until somebody can just come and pick him up. Like, what is this? Like, is this the troubled kid at Latchkey that the, the teachers just don't want to deal with? Just, his parents will be here anytime. Just, just let him go. That's insane to me. And his mama is right there paying for this shit for him to keep getting out. Nobody explained to her what he's doing. I mean, come on, man. $500 for those crimes and with his uh, history. So $500 with those crimes and his history. Way to say it, Southern Law. That's exactly right. What the hell, man? I don't, even without a history, if I did that crime right now, I don't think they would let me out on bond. $500, they would want like, I don't know, $500,000, $50,000, something to make sure that your, your ass is coming back to court and you're going to serve your time and your punishment. But $500, they're just asking for someone to come get him. Jeez. At the time of November 2021, he is out on a $500 bail for having shot at people. The prosecutor in March 2021 asked that Brooks be found in contempt of court in violation of court orders for long-running child support case. Remember when his signal achievement was generating children but not paying for them? The DA tried to do something about it, but he gets a stayed sentence with work release privileges. How? Then he's back down in Georgia. He's a traveling guy, right? He just loves to travel and, and see the country. And commit crimes all over the country. Right. He's arrested by police in Union City, Georgia in domestic violence case. Yo, how many states has he covered already? I'm glad he didn't go up to Michigan. Like, you know, but like he could have. He's already covered four freaking states. Now, I'm not a criminal, okay? Do you know how many states I've been to? I, I don't leave Michigan. I don't really, normal people don't really have a reason to leave the state that often unless you're a goddamn criminal, unfortunately, unless you're running from the law and Mr. Brooks here was running from the law to the point where it's already like the third or fourth state that I'm hearing about him moving to and traveling to. I wonder why he's doing that. A man tells police he confronted Brooks when he heard Brooks beating a woman on the other side of a wall in a oh, hotel. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Now, what happens there? He makes his court appearance. He's given his signature bond, which says you have to promise to come back. Oh, God. You, well, you'll come back, right? Oh. And, of course, he says yes, and he doesn't. What? Who gave him that? Then he does appear in 2021 June in Milwaukee to show up for a status conference on his 2020 shooting case. Oh, my goodness. The case continues to be um, put off due to court congestion. And then November 2nd, 2021 is when he runs over his girlfriend's leg with the same SUV that he used to kill people later, the SUV that his mother owned. And I know people are giving her heat for posting this $1,000 bail that she did that let him yeah, out only I five. Am. I am. And this also kind of pisses me off with the experience that I've had with, with the police. I mean, think about it. Like... Eh. When I'm 18, I'm getting taken to jail without mercy because uh, I was in a car full of people and there was a roach in it. This dude is running people over, shooting, and they're just like spitting him right out of jail. Shit, for all, I've, for all I know, I mean, maybe if I would have started acting crazy as shit like Brooks, they wouldn't have even taken me to jail. That's kind of like, I mean, it's kind of starting to look like that. Is this asshole's behavior actually getting him out of trouble with the legal system like are they are they just you know what lower his bond lower his, let's just get him out of here or is somebody trying to get somebody like brooks out on the streets on purpose i mean how else could you describe this this wasn't some systematical error he didn't just fall through some cracks in the system like they keep setting his bail super low when he shouldn't even be getting it. And then they even lower his bail even more. I don't understand. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. But that's all I can stomach of this fool. Later, everybody.